Hello there, fourth graders. I hope your one pagers were going well yesterday. Uh, for the next few days, so today we're going to start talking about characters in the hope chest. Tomorrow you'll do your Friday summaries like what we've been doing every Friday so far. And then next week we'll talk a little bit more about the characters in the hope chest because there's some interesting things I want for you to see. So uh, keep working hard. I'm really proud of the work everyone's doing and Let's just, let's keep chipping away. I think everyone is doing great. So we're investigating characters in the Hope Chest. Now let's remember that the Hope Chest, written by Karen Schwabach, is a historical fiction text. So what that means is that there are fictional characters that are living during actual historical events and interacting with actual historical people. And we've met a lot of those actual historical people in the book um, so far. Um, and they'll, they'll keep actually coming through throughout the rest of the book. But the characters that are in the hope chest are fictional. Uh, Violet never lived. Chloe never lived. Myrtle never lived. Mr. Martin never lived. Um, those are characters that were created by Karen Schwabach to help portray. She's trying to teach us something about that time. And that's kind of the point of historical fiction to one degree is to kind of let you see the world through a different time through a character's eyes. And so she's picked... Uh, characters to have in the book that are all very different and kind of have different worldviews to help show us some things. So let's think for a minute about how characters in the books can be different and why they're different. So here's the basics. In all fiction stories, basically every single one I could think of, characters are different. And a lot of the time they are very, very, very different, like total opposites. Like Last Friday, we watched Toy Story with my family, with Nolan and Elliot wanted to watch it. Okay, you've got Woody and Buzz as the main characters, and they are Space Ranger and Cowboy. They are complete opposites. Authors do that on purpose. So we, we read Holes earlier in the year, and there's characters in there, and they're all very, very different from each other. You have Stanley, who came from a very loving family. You have Zero, who came from no family. He finds his family, but in the, throughout most of the book, he didn't have any family. You have Stanley, who kind of comes in and is this kind of, um, you know, picked on, not very healthy kid, uh, and he's the slowest digger. And his hands are split up from blisters. And then you've got Zero, who's like the fastest digger, and he's kind of small and wiry, and, and Stanley's kind of bigger. And you've got Stanley, who's not a criminal that never stole the shoes, but he's at a camp for criminals. And then you've got Zero, who's not really a criminal either, but he did steal the shoes. So there's differences between those characters. Even think about Mr. Pendanski and Mr. Sir. Mr. Pendanski, throughout most of the book, he's very nice and very kind. Um, and then you have Mr. Sir, who's just kind of ornery all the time. And so even though those characters are both kind of leaders at the camp, they're very, very different. They're, they're, they're almost opposites, and authors do that on purpose. Now, sometimes there will be characters that are almost identical or that are very, very similar. When authors have characters that are similar within a book, they usually um, they usually don't really differentiate between them. That They're not really a separate character. You kind of get all those characters as one batch. And they're usually not main characters either. So that would be like X-Ray, Magnet, Squid, Armpit, Zigzag. There's like small differences between them. But by and large, they're very interchangeable in the text. Whether Squid says something or Armpit says something doesn't really matter. It could probably come from either one. Um, but whether something comes from Mr. Pendanski's mouth or Mr. Sir's mouth, you, you would know just by the way it the way it talks about it, or the way the way the words are. So when an author has characters that are similar, they usually get clumped together and they're usually off to the side. They're usually not in playing the main role. And then you have the warden too, which is an interesting case because uh, there's really no one else to compare the warden to, but there's almost like two wardens in the story. We have this really nice, kind warden, and then we have uh, the warden that we get later in the story that we find out about. So um, the point here is that authors make, they make their characters very, very different from each other to help provide contrast and to help kind of drive the story forward by having different points of view and different characters seeing things in, in different ways. So let's talk about Harry Potter. Okay, you've got Harry, Ron, and Hermione are our kind of lead characters, and they're very different. Think of just Harry and Ron. You've got Harry again, who came from no family, and Ron, who came from a giant family. Like, think about them in the mirror of Erised, right? 
Harry sees his whole family and Ron sees himself because they both kind of want the opposite of what they have. Uh, you've got Harry who actually now is rich, right? Like his, his parents left him a small fortune and you've got Ron who comes from a poor family. Okay. Then over here, you've got Hermione. Now Hermione is the smart one. Um, Ron is kind of more of the, he's not the, the smartest student, but he's more of the brave one. And Harry's kind of more of the, you know, creative kind of figure it out one. But, uh, you know, Hermione has muggle parents. Ron comes from a well-established um, family of wizards. Harry comes from a well-established family of wizards, but, but they're dead. So the author just really kind of tries to make every single character different in every single way. There's really not, I mean, they have general similarities. I mean, all three of them are in Gryffindor. But as far as they're like, uh, character traits or what they bring to the table, they're all very different. And you think about like Neville and Malfoy, those are very, very different characters than anyone else in the story. Now there's exceptions to this rule in Harry Potter, just like holes had, you know, armpit, zigzag, squid, magnet. Um, Harry Potter has crab and Goyle, but you never, you never see crab's name without Goyle. It's always crab and Goyle together because they're basically the same they, they have the same characteristics. They serve the same purpose. Same thing with Fred and George. You rarely see Fred without George in the story. And in fact, I think in Harry Potter, in this first Harry Potter, we haven't seen Fred or George apart once. They've been together. Every time you see Fred, you see George, and they're always just doing some sort of shenanigans. So those exceptions are when, a, when an author has characters that are similar, they kind of get clumped together, and then they're off to the side. Even the professors are very, very different from each other. Dumbledore, he's the old and the wise one. And then you have Professor McGonagall, who is, well, she's a woman versus a male, right? But she's, um, you know, she's more sharp and more, you know, a, a bit more terse with the students. And then you have Snape, who Harry, Ron, and Hermione absolutely hate, who is mean and rude. And then you have Quirrell, who's, you know, stuttery and nervous. And so there's really not really think in the whole in all of harry potter that we've read so far there's really no two characters that are the same except for maybe crab and goyle and fred and george so let's apply that to the hope chest in the hope chest we've got four main characters we've got violet we've got myrtle we've got mr martin and we've got chloe and they're all very very different now there's places where there's overlap but there's really not a ton between these characters violet and chloe probably have the most overlap um, but otherwise, they're all very, very different characters. And I want us to start thinking about, number one, how they're different. And number two, once we know that they're different, how can that help us understand what the author is trying to teach us a little bit better? Like, what does that help tell us about this time of the women's suffrage movement when we can sort of understand how these four characters are all different? So what you're going to be doing today is you're going to be assigned one of these four characters and you're going to go back in the text. I want you to pull open your book, open it up, and I want you to go back and search for times where we've learned about things about these characters to see so we can really learn who are these characters? How do they see the world? So here's how it's going to be divided up. Violet. Uh, so Casey, Sierra, Zach Bassett, Millie, Brett, McKenna, and Kenley. Your job is to research Violet. Uh, Violet, on the one hand, is probably the easiest one because Violet is literally like on almost every single page of the book. However, Violet's also a hard one because you have a lot to search through. So there's kind of trade-offs there. Lexi, Bennett, Kylie, Tag, Vera, Ryan, and Addie, you all have Mr. Martin. So you get to research Mr. Martin. Ben, Kale, Zach, Jackson, Emma, Ezekiel, Ian, and Logan. You guys get to research Myrtle. So find out about Myrtle. And then Yuali, Corver, Titan, Claire, Jaden, Harper, Bowen, and Lindy. You all get to investigate Chloe. Um, and I'll put this, this, this slide will be up on the Canvas page too. But let's talk about what I want you to do in a little bit more specific detail. So we spent a whole bunch of time the last few weeks talking about different types of questions that can be asked in different ways that we can interact with the text. So this is a think and search activity where you're going to have to do what this little puppy here is doing and look across multiple pages to try and piece together your answer. What we are not looking for, I'm not looking for a summary. Okay, it would be pretty easy to do a summary of 
Violet runs away. She hops on a train. She eats hot dogs with Myrtle. They go with Hobie. I'm not looking for things that they've done in the book. We've already talked about those things. I want to know what kind of person each of them are. I want to know how do they see the world. I want to know how they act. So you could say, for example, Violet is someone who dot, 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 dot. You know, Chloe is someone who is, you know, passionate about justice, things like that. So you're going to have to make inferences here. You're going to have to say, what do their actions of the things they're doing in the book, what do they tell us about a character that the author doesn't come right out and say? So you're going to have to find a lot of things that aren't directly in the text or that the author doesn't say exactly in the text, but you're going to have to kind of piece, piece it together. You're also going to have to synthesize, which is where we're piecing together multiple pieces of the book. This might take you a little bit of time, and that's okay. And it also might take you quite a bit of brain power, and that's okay too. For you to go back and look across the pages and provide page numbers in your summary, uh, provide page numbers of what um, of what you learned about your character. So I do want this to be at least five sentences. You know, like if your if your response is just Violet is nice. Um, you know, that's a, that's, that's not quite the depth I'm looking for with this. I want you to try and say, what kind of person is this character? Who are they? Like, if you were to describe who they are and not what they do to me, how would you describe that? So good luck with this. I am super excited to see what your responses are. And then we'll start using the responses next week to go into, um, phase two of this, which is where we're going to take a little bit deeper look at Violet next week. So thank you so much for watching. Work hard and keep up the good work. Bye-bye.